Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be using the Bouquet Builder stamp set from Waffle Flower. And I really love this stamp set in particular because of the tall, large image in the bottom right corner. This really tall flower image I thought would look amazing on an oversized card, oversized for me anyway. I'm going to make a five by seven card which is bigger than my usual four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to have the opportunity to have a nice big wide border around the outside edge and really give this a more artistic look. The idea behind this card was I wanted it to mimic like those fine art prints that have a really pale background and a lot of white space around the outside edge. So that's what I'm going toward while I start this project and I'm stamping the flower image onto some watercolor paper. This is some Fabriano Artistico extra white watercolor paper. It's already cut to five by seven and I'm stamping the, the flower image in Versamark ink. I've stamped it twice. This is going to make sure that even though there's some texture on that paper that I get a really good stamped impression. I then sprinkled on some white embossing powder right over that stamped image and the embossing powder sticks to the sticky ink and I'm actually going to um, uh, paint over the top of this. So I'm going to heat set this until all the white powder is melted and smooth and then I'm going to go into the painting. So like I mentioned before, I want a nice thick border around the outside edge. So I'm going to actually take this blue painter's tape. It's just shy of one inch wide. And I'm going to use that around the outside edge to create the perfect border. I'm putting that tape right up against the edge of the watercolor paper. And then because the edges aren't really taped down, I'm going to go ahead and add more tape going all the way around. This is going to really press that paper down to my hard board here and prevent warping when it comes to the watercolor paper. If you've ever done a lot of watercolor washes on watercolor paper, the paper starts to buckle and bow up or even go down, like fall down into little valleys. And if you have it taped down to a hard surface like this, it kind of stretches the paper across that surface. And as the watercolor paper dries, it goes back to its natural state, which is very, very flat. So it's one of those things when you're watercolor painting, you really need to tape down the surface of your watercolor paper. Sometimes I don't do that if I'm just going to be painting right in the center and I'm not planning to use a ton of water. But for the most part, I do try to tape down my projects whenever I'm painting. So I'm using some Prang watercolors today. These are really inexpensive, just a few dollars. And I'm going to keep this painting very simple. Because I used heat embossing powder for the stamped image and then heat set it till it was melted, it has a kind of a raised bumpy line where all the stamp lines are. And this is going to give myself a barrier for painting. It makes it super easy to paint sections like this because you can just drop the color in and the paint won't go beyond the lines. So for each one of these petals on this flower, I brought in some water and then I dropped in some yellow and then I'm using a tiny bit of orange to add some more shading at the interior center area of the flower and also for some of these petals where it's folded over or it has the underside of the petal being shown. In those cases I'm also using a little bit of orange. And I don't technically know what type of flowers these are but to me they look like they would be yellow. So that's the color scheme I'm going with today. And I also wanted to make sure that as I paint these petals that the very tips of the petals are very, very light. Because I'm going to be painting this entire area, even the background, there aren't many opportunities for any white except for the lines of the image. So I wanted to have a little bit of white on the very edges or the tips of the petals. I thought that would um, give some brightness to the area. And I'm also painting in very pale colors. I'm not adding a ton of color. Uh, in the past, when I've done a lot of watercolor painting, I've had very pigmented paint, very thick paint. I'm adding lots of bright colors. And sometimes with watercolor, you just want a really soft look. You know, you want the really pale, um, 
peaceful looking colors. And that's what I was going for in this one. I didn't want any super, super dark colors. And I also wanted the transition of colors to show. So for example, I wanted the transition of the yellow and the orange to really show. And as I move on to the leaves, I really wanted the green and blue shades to show more. I wanted there to be a transition from blue or from green to blue. And you're really gonna see that once I start going down to the leaves on the lower section of the painting. I'm dropping in a little bit of green and then I'm gonna drop blue in where the darkest areas would be. I'm just trying to get some nice variation in color. And after I drop that color in, for the most part, I'm just gonna let it dry because um, the really cool watercolor effects that you get from your paintings almost always happen if you don't mess with it too much. If you just let it, let the wet paint kind of work within itself and then dry back. You get some really cool effects. And it's one of those things when you're learning to watercolor paint or you're just starting out, you sort of have to let go of some of the control. You have to just let the paint do its thing and you'll really learn to appreciate it when it comes out amazing because it doesn't always come out amazing every time. So now I'm mixing up a nice pale kind of a purpley gray color. Um, I chose this color in particular because of the yellow of the flowers. On the color wheel, yellow and purple are opposite from each other, and that means that they're complementary colors. So complementary colors like always look bright and they bring out the best in each other, if that makes sense. If you think about red and green, they're across from the color wheel, you know, across from each other. And they're also traditional Christmas colors, which I find interesting. But red and green really play off each other. Um, if you see red and green next to each other, the colors are intensified and bright. And they just look nice together um, for the most part. So I thought having a little bit of a purple tint to this gray background would go well with the pale yellow of the flowers. And as I'm painting this background, um, I mentioned this in a recent video when you're trying to do an, a very flat wash of color, as long as you keep that bead of wet paint right at the bottom and as you're traveling, keep adding more and more paint. If you keep that bead, you're going to avoid the paint rolling back and drying in itself and getting strange dry spots. That's also why you want to have your project taped down to a board and hold the board up away from the, your work surface and tilt it up because that's going to help keep that bead of paint at the bottom of the area that you're painting. So I hit this with my heat tool just to speed up the drying process. You could definitely let this air dry. And then I removed all of the tape. And I'm going to show you how I removed this tape because sometimes I get some questions um, or concerns with people saying that they peel their tape off their watercolor paper and it tears the paper. So my best advice for you is go slow. And also you'll notice when I'm peeling this back, I'm really bending that tape back on itself. I'm practically folding it back on itself. And that really helps uh, prevent the paper from tearing because the if you're going to pull straight up, that's when it's going to pull the paper and start tearing. But if you fold it back on itself, it, it's less likely to do that. So I'm going to use the Wish stamp set for a waffle flower. Um, this little tiny Miss You sentiment. I kind of went through my waffle flower stash looking for a really small understated grating that I could use on the bottom of this. Like I mentioned before, I want this to sort of mimic some of those fine art prints that have um, really wide borders around the painting. And in those cases, uh, you know, when it's a flower or a plant, a lot of times in the bottom corner, they'll have the name of the plant, like the scientific name. And I thought having a, the greeting down there at the bottom would sort of suggest that same idea. So I trimmed down the 5 by 7 watercolor piece just a tiny bit because I wanted it to be a little bit smaller than a 5 by 7 card. That allows me to have some white around the edges showing. And then I prepped my card base out of some Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock scored that so it was a 5 by 7 card, and then adhered my watercolor piece using some foam adhesive. And I used plenty of that adhesive. I was not shy. I want to make sure there aren't any um, areas where the paper could dip down once I sent this through the mail. I want it to be nice and sturdy. So that's my card for today. hope you guys enjoyed this really soft watercolor, and I will see you guys in another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.